Yo, that adds so much to it. Where on the street is, you're a videographer and you suck at sound design. But it's cool because we're gonna fix it. So we're gonna do three things today. We're gonna uncomplicate sound design. We're gonna demystify how hard it is. And we're gonna learn just how easy it is to take your videos from sounding like this to sounding like this. You just got done editing your video, you want to export it, you want to get it on YouTube, but now you have to do sound design. So you rush through it. And because you rush through it, your sound design sucks. You're putting minimal effort into it. You're just slapping a few sound effects on it. Yeah, I'm looking at you guys that just throw wind sound effects on your videos and call it good. It's not gonna cut it. Yep, time to level up your sound design. Let's be real. Mediocre sounds make mediocre films. So my hope for you in this video is that I can demystify and pull back the veil on the idea of sound design to where you can understand that it's easy and you can do it too. In this video, I'm gonna be diving into my timeline showing step-by-step -step how I edited my sound in the video you just watched. The process is kind of long, so if you wanna watch the whole thing, click the link in the description to sign up for my Patreon, where you can learn how to fully put together similar sound design for your films from start to finish. The first and most important thing is you have to have high quality sounds. And the best way to achieve that is by having sound packs. And the one that I use almost exclusively is called the Flow SFX Sound Pack by Multiply Media, which if you like them after watching this video, you can click the link in the description to get 25% off your own pack. And the edit that I used at the beginning of this video, I almost exclusively used the Flow SFX Sound Pack for all the sounds that you heard. Now once you have your sound pack, you need to realize something. You can't pick your sounds the same way that you pick your videos. Think of it this way. Whenever you go about picking your videos when you're in your editor, you're scrolling through thumbnails and you're getting a little preview of what it's going to look like. You can even jump into the video file and scrub through it to see even more in depth what that video file looks like. With sound, you can't do that. You actually have to slow down and listen to each and every individual sound because the name of the sound is not gonna tell you exactly what it's gonna sound like. This idea is huge. Broken deep whoosh or airy tension doesn't mean anything until you actually listen to it and you can connect the name with the sound. So this is why a lot of people suck at sound design. It's not that you're necessarily bad at sound design, it's just that you're rushing through and you're not giving it the due diligence that it deserves. It takes a lot of patience to slow down and listen to every single sound in the sound pack. So once you get your sound pack, make sure you take the time to get familiar with the actual sounds that are in your sound pack. Listen to every single one, the risers, the impacts, the whooshes. Become familiar with it and slow down and listen to them. With almost every film that I edit, I make sure that I take the time to go back into my sound pack and listen to almost every single sound so that I have a good idea of what's gonna fit my video. So next we got an easy one. You know how when you're color grading your videos and you're stacking your color correction and your LUTs one layer on top of another? You can do the same thing with your sound design. Look how much more dynamic the sequence is as I add each layer of sound to it. Really not much more that I need to be saying about that. I'll be showing you more whenever I'm live editing here in a couple minutes, but just make sure you're layering your sound effects. The more layers you have, the more impactful, the more immersive your sounds are gonna be. You'll also wanna remember three things whenever you're doing your sound design. You don't want it to be too loud, you wanna use them in moderation, and you wanna make sure that each sound has a legitimate purpose in your film. That is, that they're complementing the shots that are on your screen. Random sound effects without purpose do nothing for your films. They can actually take away from your films and the story that you're building. Now, while you should always be making sure that your sound effects actually complement the shots that are in your video, it's okay to get outside of the box and be creative with the actual sounds that you're using. Take, for example, this shot of this hand moving. Because of the camera shake, because of the camera moving left or right, because of the movement of the hand, because of the zoom that I added in post, it felt like there was some shake going on, so this earthquake sound effect, this rock crumbling sound effect worked really well with it. Next, and if you're in Premiere, this is a really fun one, you can use a little preset called Sound Reverb. Once you add it to your audio clip, you can go to Edit and then pull the drop down menu down and go to Somewhere Not Here. Without getting too deep, this kind of pulls the sound back into your mix and brings it out of your face a little bit so that it's not as punchy, which again is what we want with our sounds. I probably use Somewhere Not Here Surround Reverb preset on 80% of the clips that I drop into my timeline. I promise you're gonna love using it. And if you're in an editing software that's different than Premiere, you can just dampen your low frequencies, your high frequencies, change your room size, and you'll basically be there. 
take a screenshot of this preset and apply it to your own editing software. Okay, this is the part of the video that is very important. I want to remind you to slow down and take time to edit the sound in your videos. The biggest reason your sound design is not good is because you're not taking the time to do it. I think sometimes as video editors, we forget that we're actually editing. It's not created and somebody's not seeing it the second that we drop it into our timeline. So it's okay to make a mistake. If you drop a sound effect in that doesn't work and it sounds bad, guess what? You can pull it right back out. If it sounds great, then good. You just made your video much more immersive. So give yourself the opportunity, give yourself the space by slowing down to have good sound design. I promise you whenever you start slowing down, trying different audio clips with each other, that your sound design capabilities are gonna go up a lot. Next, I wanna talk about high pass and low pass filters. If you're adding sounds layer by layer, you're probably gonna notice that your sounds are gonna keep getting muddier and muddier as you keep meshing them all together. This is because there's only so much you can hear between the low frequencies and the high frequencies. And a lot of these sound effects that come from these sound packs have a lot of low end, and so they can get all muddied up. So in order to counteract that, you can pull some of the highs out of there and get rid of the lows using a high pass. A high pass filter lets you choose a certain frequency that everything above gets to stay and everything below gets eliminated. Likewise with the low pass filter, if you're wanting to keep more of the low frequencies, you get to choose a frequency and everything below that frequency gets kept, everything above it gets eliminated. I'll show you some really practical ways that I use this to accentuate certain sound effects that would have been muddied otherwise in the edit that I'm gonna be doing here in a second. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the office. All right, so we're here in the editor. It's time to dive in. I have my live actual timeline pulled up right here. If you look through it real quick, I think at certain points, not the whole thing, but I go down almost 19 layers. Could be 18, I could have pulled this up one right here, but 18 layers at points for sounds. Now I encourage you to have headphones on like me for uh, any kind of sound design. Also encourage you to have some big old studio monitors but for these purposes, headphones are gonna be great. Just some big old ones like this over the ear. Basically what I'm wanting to do now is I'm gonna go ahead and just copy my video. I'm gonna create a new sequence here. Let's call this YouTube sequence. And for now, I'm just gonna copy and paste my video into this sequence here. So if I just put this wind effect in here, let's just drag my head to the right there. Throw that in there, drag it back a little bit. So as we know, when it's great to have in a video, really can add to it. Just kind of gives it just a general ambience that we're all pretty used to adding to our films. Now the next one's a little bit more of an atmosphere. It's gonna add a little bit more anticipation, if you will. Go ahead and add that in here. We'll see what those do. So just look real quick, uh, listen to how empty this sounds right now without any of this. Next, we got this earthquake sound here. It's starting right here when he's running because it's starting to shake around. The camera's super shaky. So it's a great time to add in this rumbly sound. All right, let's keep it going. Let's move on for a second. We'll go to our first set of movement here. So we got a couple things going. We got the start of the video happening and then we got him coming by. And so when let's, uh, let's just do him coming by first. So as he comes by, I add this little whoosh sound in there to add to that movement. Cool. And now to introduce this actual shot I got from Flow SFX sound pack. I got a vintage whoosh. And then I got this riser. And so if I take this, and I just put this right on the beginning of the clip. Now this sound is a really abrasive sound. Uh, it's got a lot of high end too. And so I did dampen that down with the surround reverb preset on that actual one. Uh, did not adjust the gain. Then, taking this riser, a 
look how much more impactful that is than just this. Let's take out even the whoosh right there. It is insane how much more it makes that video clip come to life. And that's just two sound effects right there. That's really doing all the work right there. It's really doing the heavy lifting. We got a low pass on this one here where I'm letting everything below almost 4,000 hertz pass through. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If it was helpful, let me know in the comments below what was the most helpful part to you. I wanna know what's the most beneficial part to you guys so I can keep helping you guys in the best way possible with these videos. Again, if you like the sounds that you heard in this video, you can use the affiliate link in the description of this video to get 25% off your own pack. Also, if you did like this video, maybe think about subscribing, hitting that thumbs up button, whatever floats your boat. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.